the story behind progesterone actually is is rather fascinating. Um, it started literally 27 years ago today. Uh, and uh, it's when a gentleman by the name of Dr. Donald Stein, is a brilliant scientist, was doing work in, uh, in his lab uh, on uh, brain development and something we call neuroplasticity, where uh, you look to see if the brain can repair it itself. And back when he was doing this work, people didn't believe that the brain could repair itself. So it was rather novel work at the time anyway. And what he found or kept finding was that his female rats were recovering better than the male rats in his, cl in his studies. Um, and unlike many scientists who would have said, this is causing my experiment a problem, I'm going to ignore and only do one gender, he basically said, no, this is something very important, I'm going to pursue it. And then over a period of 17 years doing a variety of very elegant experiments, um, he realized that it was actually the hormonal state of the animal uh, that uh, conferred the neuroprotection. And so basically what he found was that uh, when the animal was high in progesterone, which is a hormone that goes up and down in the menstrual cycle, uh, that the animal had almost no brain swelling after an injury compared to, say, the male cohorts or compared to females that didn't have the progesterone high in the, in the animals. Um, he then uh, did another experiment where um, he made the animals think they were pregnant. It's called pseudo-pregnancy, and there's a way to do this. But essentially, the female animal thinks it's pregnant, and so its hormones um, change dramatically. And one of those changes is that progesterone goes 10 to 100 fold higher than what it would normally be in the menstrual cycle. Um, and indeed, when the progesterone was really, really high, uh, the, um, the amount of swelling in the brain after the injury was equal, essentially, to as if the, the, the animal had no injury. And this was his epiphany. This is where he realized, I'm onto something. Um, you know, after many years of sort of thinking whether it's structural, what, what is the reason for the difference? in the female rats and the male rats. Um, and it turned out to be hormonal, which is good because that's something that we can modulate. Um, and <clears throat> so from that point on, he began to aggressively try to figure out, okay, uh, endogenous hormones make a difference. What about if we give um, progesterone? And so he did an experiment in the animals and was able to show that in both male and female, uh, I mean, uh, female and male rats, that uh, there was equal uh, protection. Um, and this actually, again, was a very pivotal question because remember at the time, we were thinking that progesterone, or everybody thought that progesterone was a female hormone. So no one even realized or knew whether males would respond to it at all. Um, and, in, and indeed, they did, just as well as females. And we now know that progesterone is not a female hormone, actually. Uh, it's a neurosteroid. It's produced in the brain, by the brain, for the brain. And probably the reason, at least the fundamental thinking behind why progesterone is even in the menstrual cycle uh, is because uh, it is there for neural, the neuronal development of the, of the fetus. So it begins to get very high in the first, second, third trimesters of development, and it's critical that it be there for neuronal development. And so that's sort of what the thinking behind what progesterone is doing in sort of the, the female menstrual cycle and pregnancy. So technically it's not a female hormone, technically it's a neurosteroid neurodevelopment, brain development uh, steroid. And it's, it's very highly conserved. If you look back evolutionarily, um, it's in very, very early uh, animals, very early organisms, progesterone and the receptors for progesterone are present. So you know there's something critically Im important about it. Um, and, and much of this discovery has really sort of been more recent uh, than when Don first started his work. Um, so. Uh, when he gave it to the male animals, realized that it was working, uh, he began to look at the amount, of, amount, the dose, the window, and all the things that you need to get uh, prepared for um, human testing.